Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you George Brent, Priscilla Lane, and Gail Patrick in Wife, Husband, and Friend. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Many a woman has given up a career for marriage, and many a husband has been constantly reminded of it ever since. In such cases, the husband usually uh, becomes a philosopher. And the strange thing is that with every passing year, the more wonderful the career is likely to seem to the lady, and the greater the demands on the husband's philosophy. It's a very far-reaching situation. And that's what gave universal appeal to the 20th Century Fox picture wife, husband, and friend, a very human comedy that you'll hear tonight with Priscilla Lane as the wife, George Brent as the husband, and Gail Patrick as the friend. We borrowed Miss Lane this week from the cast of the new Warner Brothers picture, Million Dollar Baby. In Wife, Husband, and Friend, a wife's career, this time it's singing, pops up quite unexpectedly when her husband thought it safely buried away. The result is a domestic crisis of the first magnitude, and the solution is a monument of ingenuity. But that's for George Brent, Priscilla Lane, and Gail Patrick to reveal at the proper time. I hope you're ready for an evening of gaiety and laughter, because we have the makings of it right here, and all we need is you to enjoy it. Every once in a while, someone who's just joined this audience tells us that they're going to buy a few boxes of Lux Flakes because they consider it their logical ticket to these evenings in the Lux Radio Theater. We always appreciate that because their friendly intentions are most gracious. And we know they're just about to make a pleasant and valuable discovery. Actually, of course, (laughs) there's nothing under the sun to keep you from taking your seat in this theater week after week without buying anything. But if you'll just try Lux Flakes, we'll trust your good judgment from then on. Now we'll introduce you to Wife, Husband, and Friend, as the curtain goes up on Act One, starring George Brent as Leonard Borland, Priscilla Lane as Doris, and Gail Patrick as Miss Cecile Carver. On the stage of the New York Opera House, a great soprano is about to die on a high B flat. You'll know from this that the opera is almost over. The full-dress audience is breathless, spellbound. In a box near the stage, Doris Borland sits tensely on the edge of her seat. Mrs. Blair, Doris' mother, sits tensely on the edge of her seat. Major Blair, Doris' father, is a little more comfortable. And Leonard Borland, Doris' husband, is sound asleep. Leonard always goes to sleep at the opera. Wasn't she wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful. I can't tell you what it does to me, Mother. Music like that, it's its like a bubble bursting inside of me. Myself, I generally faint. It seems to have cast its spell on Leonard, too. He's asleep. Again? Leonard. Leonard, dear, wake up, wake uh, up. Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, hello, Doris. The pretty music is over, darling. We can go home now. Over already? Why, it seems we only got here yesterday. How are you, Major? Evening, my boy. Hello, Mother. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Doris, I think your mother's angry with me. I must say, I can't understand how anyone can sleep through an opera. Oh, you get used to it after a while. Like I always say, the opera's really no worse than a horrible case of arthritis. Leonard, shall we go? Of course, dear. Mother and Dad are coming for dinner tomorrow. Leonard! Yes, yeah. I said Mother and Dad are coming for dinner tomorrow night. Oh, fine. Where's the cap off the toothpaste? I don't know. Look for it. You did look for it. I think you hide them or something. Oh, I'm tired. I don't know why you should be, dear. You slept all evening. No, I didn't. The tenor woke me up with the second act finale, and I had a terrible time getting back to sleep. Darling, do you mind if I tell you something? You're very crude. Really? You have bad manners. You're still just an engineering school halfback. 
fullback. And the worst of it is you're proud of it. Well, I guess I'm the art or type. You see, You I... don't like opera. You don't like the Playgoers Guild. You don't like any of the arts. Well, I like football. Football. There, you see. I can't understand why you like football, and you can't understand why you like opera. Uh, you forget I used to sing, dear. Oh, no, no. I couldn't forget that, darling. Uh, what do you mean by that? No, darling, let's not get into an argument. I merely said I used to sing. And I merely said I used to play football, but I don't go around wearing shoulder pads. Now see here, Leonard. Baby, let's get married. Again? Sure, what does it matter so long as we love each other? Oh, Leonard, what am I going to do with you? Kiss me. Leonard. I love you, Doris. Really? Yeah. Every time I see you, it's the first time. And every time I kiss you, I've never kissed you before. That's why it's so exciting. It's always so new. Mm, that's lovely, darling. Where'd you get it? Out of a book. Except for the kiss. <laughs> now, that was my own idea. The book just said it, but I feel it. Which is so much better. But Doris, hmm? I've got a confession to make to you. Confession? It's not an easy thing to say, but the truth is you're a snob. Why, you, you take that back. Hey, cut that out. Cut it out. Hey, you hurt. I meant to. Darling, if you weren't in the social register, I'd smack you flat on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry tonight. What's the matter, Major? Leonard, my boy, how did you like the opera last night? I slept like a baby. No, no, I mean, did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Well, I had a bad dream during the third act. No, 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 I mean anything unusual about Doris. You didn't notice that gleam in her eyes. We came out. Ah, there you go again. Leonard, Doris is getting ready to sing again. I can feel it in my bones. She's getting ready for that, that career again. And there you are, sitting back, blind as a bat. Major, with all due respect, you're crazy. That's all over. Finny. That's the way I used to be about her mother. Blind. I must have aged 30 years listening to my wife sing. And that's the way it's going to be with you, too. Well, I, I may not know everything, Major, but I flatter myself that I know how to handle Doris in her career. That's what I used to say about her mother. One way to handle a woman, Major. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Fisher. Will you take the Major's coat? Yes, sir. Only one way, kind but firm. I was firm. My wife was firmer. <laughs> the hand of steel and the velvet glove, it never fails. Uh, hey, what's that? Fisher, what's that? Mrs. Blair and Mrs. Borland, sir. They've been practicing all afternoon. Well, good night, Leonard. Tell my wife I've gone to the club, but not which one. Oh, nonsense, Major. Come on no, in. No, 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 no. It's your problem, my boy. And already I recognize history repeating itself. Tomorrow, or maybe even tonight, she'll say... Do you realize if it hadn't been for you, I'd be a great singer today? And after that, X marks the spot. You think so? I know so. Good night, my boy. Fisher, is anyone with them? The singing teacher, sir. Mr. Hugo Kurtfelder. I'll have Mr. Kurtfelder's coat ready. He's leaving in just a moment. Oh, darling, you're early. Uh, you know Hugo Kurtfelder, don't you? Sure. So long, Hugo. I beg your pardon. Come on, this way out. Lizard! I'll get to you next, Ma. Outside, Hugo. But I don't understand. Of course you don't. That's what I'm just trying to tell you. Come on, John. He's insane. A stark, raving maniac. And I've always suspected it. Good evening, Ma. Leaving so soon? Leonard. Sorry, dear, but your mother's next. This way, Ma. Doris! Now, listen, Ma. You're a great old girl, and I love you. But this is my home and not yours. And the major's the one you're supposed to pester and not me. So if it's all the same to you, outside. You! You loony! So long, Ma. And I'll thank you not to call me Ma. Hello, darling. Leonard, how dare you? How dare you? Now, listen, don't get excited. Who do you think you are, Tarzan? Listen. With Hugo, it was bad enough, but to bully an old woman, my mother. Now, listen, darling. And stop starting everything you say with listen. Okay, any way you like, but listen. Be I... quiet. Do you realize what Hugo said today? Something screwy, I bet. Do you realize he said if it hadn't been for you, I might be a great singer today? A great singer, I tell you. He didn't. And that I had a career. Maybe a brilliant career, but for your stubbornness. He did? Yes, and I still have a voice. I still can sing. He said so. All right, sing. Well, I'm going to. Do you know what else Hugo said this afternoon? He said that in three months I could be ready for a recital at Town Hall. Sure, in three months I could be ready to lick Joe Lewis. When you say a thing like that, I seriously wonder if you still have good sense. Well, the statement stands. Well, I'm going to do it. Do what? Give a recital. <laughs> you are over my dead body. But why? Why do you say such a thing? Why do you take such an attitude? Oh, forget it. I'm not going to forget it. Not again. You stopped my career when we were married, and you've stopped it ever since. But now I'm going to know why. Well, I'm telling you. Don't ask me. But I am asking you. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Because you're a lot... 
Uh, you're a rotten singer. So? So I'm a lousy... No, I, I said rotten. You did not. Oh. You said lousy... Well, all right, what's the difference? All right, okay, I said it. But what Hugo says, a singer himself, a man who has taught and coached singers for years, what he says means nothing? Well, you asked for it. And may I ask how you, uh, a, a, a contractor, without even a child's knowledge of music, may I ask how you know that I'm a lousy... I, I don't know it, I, but I know it. I mean, it's instinctive. It's, uh... And that's all you have to say about it? Isn't it enough? No, darling, not nearly enough. And if you don't believe me, read the papers tomorrow morning. Social Registrar debut. Doris Ballin, daughter of Major and Mrs. L. Rodney Blair, will present a program of the lighter operatic areas at the town hall the evening of May 14th. Registrate recital next Tuesday. No, deadline's approaching, Mike. Brother, you're in a hole. Is that the best you got to offer? I'm your business partner, not a magician. But I got Haggerty to buy 20 tickets. I promised him preferential treatment on the next concrete deal. Why, Mike, that's blackmail. You said it. It's the only way, though. I'm buying up most of the tickets myself and passing them out free. You see, the way I figure it, I can't stand to lose much more than a thousand bucks on the whole show. That makes it dirt cheap. Makes what dirt cheap? Well, for Doris to get it out of her system, of course. That's all she needs. A nice blowout like this just to show me she's got what it takes. That'll wash the whole thing up. I guess you're right at that. Sure, that's why I want to put it over big. And she'll get it out of her system, and that'll satisfy her forever. I see. Have you told her yet that we lost money on our last four jobs and we haven't got any others? No. What's the use? Plenty of use. You could economize a little, couldn't you? Plow under a few of those butlers and maybe rent out a room or two until we get something coming in again? No. So far as Doris knows, we're making money hand over fist. Besides, if I told her the truth, she might want to cook for me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I tell you, Mike, a singing wife is a terrible problem. Yeah. If my wife even starts to hum, I'll smack her right across the mouth. The round tone. Full. Watch the breezing, Mrs. Boyland. Doris, you'd better hurry. We'll do at the theater in 20 minutes. Not now, Mrs. Blair, please. Doris, where's my pants? What's the matter with you? evening pants. I can't find them. Oh, Leonard, don't bother Doris now. She's got to practice. We're due at the theater. Quiet, please, quiet. Telephone, Mrs. Ballin. <laughs> Telephone's pants. How can we practice? I'll take it, Fisher. Doris, where's my pants? Hello. Let her alone. Well, listen, Hello, I got what? no pants. But that's awful. All right, I'll go but without her. Maybe it'll start something new. Vulgar. Vulgar. Well, you something. name it and I'll do it, but I got I to know. have I'm pants. Will Leonard, you please keep your voice down? Leonard, something terrible has happened. Oh, Doris, where are my pants? Oh, Leonard, please listen. Louise Bronson got Rudolph Hertz to promise to come and give me a review. And now it turns out that she told him the wrong day. Who's Rudolph Hertz? Only the most famous music critic in the country. Well? I've got to have him there, Leonard. I must have him. A good review from him would mean everything. How about giving him a ring? Oh, the phone's private. There's only one thing to do, Leonard, and that's for you to go right over to his hotel yourself. Hey, wait a minute. Leonard, please. But I can't go busting in on some guy I've never even heard of. Oh, you must not upset me, Leonard. I've got to have Rudolph Hertz at my recital. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get my coconut. Hey, wait a minute. Where's my pants? Yes? Oh, excuse me. I, I'd like to see Mr. Hertz, please. Oh, I'm afraid he's not here. I've been waiting for him myself. Oh. Won't you come in, please? Is there anything I can do? Well, uh, you see, my wife, she's a singer. Well, I mean, she thinks she's a singer. <laughs> a lot of us do. My name is Cecile Carver. Oh, why, you sang at the opera the other night. Were you there? Yes, I was. Did you like it? Uh, well, uh, I was asleep. <laughs> oh, now, really? No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> not but... at all. I enjoy honesty. Won't you sit down? Oh, I can't. You see, my wife's singing at the town hall tonight, and I was supposed to ask Mr. Hurst to come over and listen to her. I hardly think he'll be back in time, but I'll give him your message if I see him. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, I've got to run along. Wait. What did you want? An opinion of your wife's voice? Well, I don't need any opinion. <laughs> I see. Well, good evening, Mr... Uh, Borland. Leonard Borland. Good night, Miss Carver. Good night. <laughs> Charming. Hello, desk. Cecile Carver speaking. Will you call the town hall, please? Have them reserve a ticket for tonight's recital in my name. Thank you. Oh, 
you are marvelous. Oh, thank you, thank you. Outside, everyone. Please, Mrs. Borland must race. Thank you so much. Doris, you were magnificent. Well, Leonard? You win, baby. Give me a kiss. Oh, darling. Oh, honey, you murdered him. Perhaps next time you'll think twice, Oh, no, you bet I will, Ma. Uh, now, how about us getting away, Doris? Just you and me and having a little celebration of our own, huh? Oh, Leonard, I can't. It's quite out of the question. Hugo's coming back with the agent. With a what? Uh, the agent, dear. The man who arranges the tour. But this, uh, I thought this was all. I mean, I thought this was all you wanted was this. Uh... Are you out of your head again? Leonard, you mean that after a, a triumph like this, I should actually give it all up? Oh, but honey, well, I... Don't you see, dear, if I had flopped this evening? But I didn't. The whole house packed. Not only friends and people I knew, but hundreds I'd never saw or heard of before. The entire theater sold out. Oh, Leonard, even you must appreciate what that means. Yes, I do. You must realize, Leonard, that after tonight, Doris belongs not to you, but to America. But does America want her? <laughs> Mrs. Borland, pictures. Oh, Doris, pictures. On stage, quickly. Oh, Leonard, I've got to go. I'll see you later, darling. Uh, don't wait up for me. Oh, what have I done? Hello? Hello, Mr. Borland? Yes? I thought I'd find you there. This is Cecile Carver. Oh, how are you? I was at the recital, Mr. Borland. Would you still like an opinion of Mrs. Borland's voice? I certainly would. Then why don't you come over to the Dorchester Apartments and see me? Let's say tomorrow at three? Thanks, I'll be there. So you think she's good, eh? She has a fine voice, a remarkably fine voice. And you think she ought to go on? With that voice and her looks? Certainly. Oh, well, that's fine. You're such a liar. But so am I. Liar? You don't think it's fine at all, any more than I think she has a good voice. What about the performance last night? It's sucker stuff. Who was there? Friends and people you bullied into buying tickets. It was amateur night with a neighborhood favorite, that's all. Mm. I wish she knew that. You want to hear something else? What? You're scared of her. Scared to death. Scared of Doris? <laughs> Why, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you don't want to go on, do you? But she's going on, isn't she? Yeah, she's going on all right. And you're not going to try to stop her? Well, I have tried. Have you tried saying no? Well, I couldn't do that. Couldn't say no to a girl like Doris. <laughs> I like you, Mr. Borland. I like you, too. Thank you. Well, I've got to get ready for a concert myself. I'm singing in a charity performance tonight. You're darn nice, Miss Carver. Cecile will do. Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Oh, you can't? Oh, very well, never mind. Can you imagine that? Anything wrong? Oh, it's so stupid. They want me to sing a certain song this evening, a service song. I don't know the words, and now I can't get them. The fellow's gone out of town. Well, what's the song? Oh, some song they sang in the Navy about the waves breaking over the bow or something. Oh, that song. You know it? Sure. Enough of the words? I think so. Oh, Mr. Borland, heaven must have sent you. Sing, Mr. Borland. <laughs> Well, this is one for the book. <laughs> me singing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have it, please. Yeah, yeah, you really want me to give out? Right on the button. Yeah, but look, you know, you can't get the real ball in here. I'm, I'm strictly a bathroom singer. Where is it? Yonder, sir. Well, okay, this may not be good, but it'll be loud. You ready? Ready. <laughs> What's that? Uh, just, just test it. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Through the ocean blue we plow... As the waves break off the bow. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. You know, th this sort of thing is beginning to run into dough. Why? What happened? I, I busted a glass. It was on the shelf. You broke it? How? I sang at it. I, I should have turned my head the other way. You, you sang at the glass and it broke? Yeah, it always does. You mean it's happened before? When I'm not careful. You're not sore, are you? No. Borland, this is astounding. Well, I don't like it so much myself. Having a voice that breaks up crockery. Give me those glasses on the table. Glasses? Yeah, but... Uh... Now, come on over to the piano. What for? Sing at the glass again. Go on. I beg your pardon? Try it, try it. Loud. Okay. Up the scale. Come on, give. You see, it's a terrible waste of glassware. Borland, I'm almost afraid to say it, but 
That's a great voice. Would you mind repeating that? It sounded exactly to me as if you said I had a great voice. You have a great voice. Say, listen, why don't you lie down? It's a miracle. I think I'd better get out of here. Oh, no, no, not yet. How would you like me to give you lessons? What? I'm serious, Borland. That's what I'm afraid of. Goodbye. Oh, no, wait. You can't just walk out. You can't. Listen, I've got it. But what? You're the one that's going to sing. You're the one that's going to be a success, not your wife. How would you like to sing on tour? All the big halls. I believe you're really insane. Don't be stupid. When I tell you you've got a voice, you've got a voice. I'm Cecile Carver. I know. Yeah, but lady, I'm a contractor, a building contractor. Not to me. To me, you're a singer. A singer with a trumpet in his throat. A trumpet? Think of this. <laughs> Carnegie Hall, the lights, the excitement, the whole house packed to hear you sing. Me? You can do it, I tell you. With that voice, I guarantee it. Uh -huh. Well, all I know is that you're scaring the living daylights out of me, you know. Am I? Then think of this, too. Think of her sitting out front that night, your wife, sitting with everybody else when the house lights go down and the footlights go up, and then the applause as the star walks out on the stage. You. To, uh, to sing? To sing. Who would be the head man then, you or your wife? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But, uh, but it is a funny idea. We can do it, Borland. Will you? Sure, sure I will. Why not? Do, 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 do. Did you see that? I just busted the chandelier. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille will bring back George Brent, Priscilla Lane, and Gail Patrick for Act Two of Wife, Husband, and Friends. Now, suppose you're driving along the highway some evening, along about dinner time. I'm getting hungry, Jim. Let's stop in the next place and get something to eat. There. There's one. Uh-uh. You don't want to stop there. Uh, that one on the other side there is the one I'd pick. Well, why, Jim? We've never driven out here before. How do you know that one's better? Well, it's simple, honey. There are twice as many cars in front of it. And when twice as many people choose one place... Well, you can bet there's a pretty good reason. And that's the way it is with new Quick Lux. Twice as many women choose Lux Flakes for stockings, under things, pretty dresses, other nice things, too, as choose any other flakes, chips, or beads. And we've got plenty of reasons for doing it, too. Right, Sally. You want to tell us what they are? Mm, well, there are different reasons at different times. For instance? For instance, when you're washing out stockings and undies before you go to bed and, oh, you're sort of sleepy. Well, you don't want to wait for any old slowpoke suds. And then you're glad new Quick Lux is so fast. Any more, for instance? Sure. When you buy a dress or a sweater that you're simply crazy about, and you hate to think how you'd feel if it shrank or faded or anything when you washed it, then you're glad Lux Flakes are so gentle. Safe for anything safe in water. And when you see how far a big box of Lux Flakes goes, how many stockings and underthings, dresses, and sweaters you can wash with just one box, then you're pleased as anything to find Lux Flakes are so thrifty. Fast, gentle, and so thrifty. It really isn't any wonder, is it? That new Quick Lux is America's favorite care for stockings, underthings, pretty dresses, and so on. Two to one over any other flakes, chips, or beads. Better buy a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. It comes in the same familiar package. Doesn't cost you a cent more. And remember, when twice as many people choose one thing as another... There must be plenty of good reasons. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Wife, Husband, and Friend, starring George Brent as Leonard, Priscilla Lane as Doris, and Gail Patrick as Cecile Carver. Under the tutelage of Cecile Carver, Leonard is preparing for his debut as a singer. For a month, they've been practicing in secret session modulating his tremendous voice to keep down the glassware bills. <laughs> Meanwhile, Doris has not been idle. Regularly, for five hours each day, she strains madly at her vocal cords. Glorious, Doris. It rings like a bell. Pear-shaped. Here she. Telephone, Mrs. Borland. Who's calling, Fisher? Mr. Murray of the New York Concert Bureau, madam. Give it to me. Uh, yes, Mr. Murray? Yes. Oh. Oh, you can't. 
I see. Oh, I understand that. Yes, I know. Oh, thank you very much. Well, dear, he said no. No, I cannot understand that. I simply cannot. Uh, how about the radio? I understand it's becoming quite respectable. Oh, we <laughs> tried the radio. Oh, uh, there was that uh, movie theater also. Movie theater? Who do they think Doris is? Cab Calloway? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Mother, am I in a spot. Can you just imagine what Mr. Leonard Borland would have to say if he knew about this? Oh, that, that throwback. Can't you just hear him saying, didn't I tell you so? Why, if he ever suspected. I wonder, I wonder if he already suspects. What do you mean? Well, he's been acting so funny for the past month or so. Very jolly and mysterious, as if he had something up his sleeve. And very patronizing, too. That's what gets me. He's done everything but give me a friendly pat on the shoulder. Oh, it's probably just another woman. What? Your father always acted in that rather silly fashion after leering at some poor girl from the top of a bus. <laughs> well, at the moment, I believe I could stand for another woman easier than I can this, this pat-on-the-back attitude of his. The man is callous, absolutely callous. It's a tragic fact, my dear, but for five generations, the women of our family have married inartistic men. Most of them could scarcely be distinguished from cannibals. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> Your father was even worse. For three years, I discussed Wagner with him. Before I realized, he thought I was talking about a baseball player. <laughs> it's depressing. Anybody home? Oh, there he is now. Smile, Mother, smile. Uh, how are you, darling? How's our little canary today? Oh, very well, thank you. How are you, Ma? Well, thank you, Leonard. I, uh, I think I will be going. Now, so long, Hugo. Where's the Major, Mother dear? In the butler's pantry. Well, what's the old gentleman doing? Shooting spitballs? Leonard, please. It was his own idea. I had just started telling Doris about my debut in Washington. Yeah, well, I get it. I'll run out and see him. Well, baby, everything okay? That's fine, fine. Just keep your chin up, baby. Major, where are you? Did you see that? Didn't I tell you? Mother, that settles it. I've got to do something. I don't care what it is. I've just got to, Mother. I can't admit he was right at, about this thing. It's gone too far. What are you thinking of, dear? I'm going to take a job. Any kind of a job, as long as it's singing. I'm going to call Mr. Schultz. Doris, he was the movie theater man. Well, what of it? He's the only one who'll take me. Darling, I don't care for this. I'm going home. Oh, goodbye, Mother. Hello, uh, Mr. Schultz, please. A movie theater. After all our wonderful plans. Don't worry, darling. It'll be all right. Hello, uh, Mr. Schultz. Uh, this is Mrs. Borland, Mr. Schultz. I've decided to accept your offer. Yes. Oh, well, I'd like to keep it quiet for a while. Uh, you see, I'm in rather a strange position. Where are you sitting in the pantry? I'm not here of my own free will. They sent me out of the room. They're plotting, I tell you. They're up to some plot. You'd better watch your step, son. Don't you worry about me, Major. I've got this whole singing business licked any time I want to bear down. You mean you've got a plan? Major, I've got a honey. Then use it now. Well, I've been hoping I wouldn't have to. Oh, Leonard, you're young yet, but when you're my age, do you want to have to sit on a pantry shelf every time some long-haired guy sits down at the piano? No. Then use your plan. No matter what they say, use it. Give them both barrels. Blow them sky high. When you're dealing with musicians, show them no mercy. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I'll have to speak to Carl. Well, you seem very cheerful, Leonard. Why shouldn't I be? Things been going well at the office? Oh, so, 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 so. Uh, Doris, I was thinking. Yes, dear? Look, uh, what do you say we pack up and get out of here? You mean leave New York? Yeah, go to Florida, Bermuda. Uh, I mean, we've been under a little strain, business and art and all that sort of thing. Maybe if we went away somewhere together, I mean, well, after all, there's nothing doing around here right away. Nothing I... doing? Oh, darling, it is sweet of you, but it's just out of the question. I know you're not interested, but you see, we're all of us just up to our ears and all these agents and managers. Sign here and sign there. It's just driving us literally crazy trying to decide which offer to take. Oh, yeah? Yes, but I finally got something that really looks good. It's not quite settled, but it's by far the best yet. Okay, okay, forget it. Why, even Hugo was impressed when he heard about it. Of course, it wouldn't mean a great deal to you, I but... I said okay, uh... didn't I? Forget it. Why, Leonard... <laughs> Here's the booking, Leonard. Open in Pittsburgh, then Cincinnati, Charleston, Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Newark, and New York. Hey, but, Cecile, what'll I tell my wife? A business trip, silly. And here's the billing. Miss Cecile Carver in a song recital, assisted by Mr. Logan Bennett. Logan Bennett. If anybody calls me that, I'll suck him. <laughs> Cincinnati. 
I in New York. Hello? Leonard? Oh, oh, I thought we were cut off, darling. Uh, what were we saying? I said you sound a little tired, Leonard. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, yes, I am. You see, uh... Who's that? Your wife? Yes. What? I, uh, I said yes, dear. Did she call you? No, I called. Leonard, I can't hear you. Uh, oh, uh, listen, dear, I, uh, I may be away a little longer than I'd planned. I mean, uh, there are certain angles to this deal. I may have to go over to Philadelphia. Oh, yeah? Doing what? Oh, you'll find out later. Do you love me? Oh, of course, dear. How much? Uh, oh, Penny, you know. I get it. Well, say it. Oh, you know. I mean, well, I... I don't have to tell you a thing like that. Uh, Come on, I... tell her. Aren't you alone, dear? Uh, well, there's a couple of fellas here. Uh... Oh, <laughs> oh I- I'm sorry. Well, good night, dear. Yeah, oh, good, uh, good night, Doris. Good night. Whew. Don't take it so hard. All you need is a little practice in lying. Hello? Uh, charge that uh, call to my room, will you? Yes, Mr. Bennett. Uh, this thing is getting me down. Oh, forget it. Come and sit down by me. Well, if you don't mind, it's sort of late. I ought to be getting along. Oh, but Leonard, I wanted to talk to you about the recital tomorrow. Oh, well, uh, can't we do it in the morning? <laughs> You're really in love with your wife, aren't you? What's so funny about that? Oh, nothing. But I do wish you wouldn't keep avoiding me all the time. You make me feel wicked, Leonard. Do I? I'm very wicked. Good night, Toots. Oh, do you have to go? <laughs> you bet your life I do. New York. Oh, boy. It's great to be back, isn't it? Are you glad to get back to New York or your wife? Both. Mostly my wife. <laughs> Well, please remember that we're playing over in Newark tonight. I want you to be at the theater at 8 sharp. Don't worry. I'll be right on the dot. I just wanted to remind you. I thought perhaps you might get so interested in seeing your wife you'd forget. By the way, just what are you going to tell her? Well, I don't know. I I figure it's too complicated to try and explain all at once. I I, I think I'll just tell her that, uh, well, I've got to follow up this business deal a little further. uh... A very novel story. Right over here, driver. Well, uh, there's no use springing it until I'm a real success. How long are you going to be, Leonard? Oh, just a few minutes. All right, I'll wait. Yeah, what? I said I'll wait. But what for? Well, you said you'd only be a few minutes. Well, yeah, but... And I'd feel easier in my mind if you were somewhere I could keep my eye on you. You're a very impulsive man, Leonard. I might suddenly find myself without a partner. All right, stick around. I'll be down as soon as I can. Hello, Fricker. How's everything? Why, Mr. Borland... I, I'm glad you're back, sir. I left my grips downstairs. I've got to beat it again. But, Mr. Borland, you... Uh, got... Where's uh, Mrs. Borland? Is she in? Uh, yes, sir. She's she's with the doctor, sir. The doctor? What's happened? Well, you see, sir, she... Uh, Good she's... afternoon, Mr. Borland. Oh, uh, doctor, what's the matter? How is she? Oh, she's quite all right, really. She's resting very nicely. She's dying. She's dying. I know it. She's oh, dying. No. <laughs> Far from it. It's just shock. Yeah, but what's what, what, what happened? Well, it's really so technical. I'd rather you've got the explanation from these two gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Kurtfelder. Good afternoon. Well, uh, what is it? Ask Jaffe, he knows. Who's Jaffe? Jaffe, that's me. Well, who are you? I'm an artist's personal representative. He's a booking agent. Oh, I see. Go on. Well, I get her a terrific deal, see? A week at the Cathedral Movie Theater at 750. So we give her a terrific build-up, see? Social registrite making personal appearance. So we got a terrific house this afternoon. Go on. So they give her the bird. <laughs> the what? The bird. It was terrific. You, you, you mean that they booed my wife singing? Uh, it was murder. They don't like that society build-up, I guess. And she ain't even through the first chorus, and boom, they give it to her. 
I beg her not to do it. I beg him not to ask her. She is not ready, and I know it. At seven fifty a week, anybody is ready. <laughs> well, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Jaffe, but I'm going to smack somebody. Hey, hey let go. Take let it go. easy, Mr. Baldwin. Stand back. Listen, your wife's been asking for you. Oh, she has. I advise you to go in and see her. Okay, no. Though. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Jaffe. Oh, Doris. Hello, Leonard. Oh, my poor darling. Go ahead. My chin's out. Take a sock at me. Oh, you little dope. Why didn't you tell me? It was going to be a surprise. What a surprise it was. Anyway, the truth's out at last. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm no good. Oh, now, listen. How can you say that? A Monday matinee in the movie house? Gee. Oh, I guessed it, dear. I wasn't kidding myself much. But I couldn't give in. I just couldn't. After what I'd said. Movie house, opera house, Carnegie Hall. It'd all be the same. I've just been a headache to everybody. Oh, you're crazy. You've got everything. <laughs> I know. Everything but what it takes. Well, for me, you've got everything. But you knew, didn't you? You knew I was no good. How would I know? <laughs> you knew all the time. Oh, I've been rotten to you, Leonard. All because you opposed my so-called career. I didn't oppose it. No, but you didn't believe in it. That's what made me so stubborn. You were willing to let me do whatever I wanted to do, but you wouldn't believe I could sing. Well, I was crazy. <laughs> no, you were right. Oh, but it's all over now. Now I'm through. All the big stars can rest easily again. Lily Pons, Gladys Swarthout, Cecile Carver. Yeah, well, what? Huh? Uh, Cecile Carver, she's a singer. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yes, I know. Uh, uh, don't, you, uh, don't you want to go to sleep, dear? Oh, no, I could stay like this forever. Mm. Uh, but I am going to sleep. So I'll feel like going to Mother's party tonight. Now, listen, you're not going to feel like going to any party. <laughs> Got to. It's for me. Mother's invited everybody in the world, whether she knows them or not, to celebrate my triumph. Oh, I can't let them think I'm dying of grief. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll let you sleep. Oh, no, don't go away. Stay here. Let me sleep in your arms. Oh, darling. Big party and famous people. You know who Mother's even asked? No, dear. Who? Cecile Carver. <laughs> but I'm not exaggerating. They booed me. Boo! Like that. <laughs> Doris, dear, this is Cecile Carver. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Oh, Doris made such a beautiful debut this afternoon. But she's so modest about it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother, but it's no use. The papers had the story. I shouldn't let it bother me, Mrs. Borland. Oh, Doris, uh, don't you think you ought to... Uh, 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 and uh, this is Mr. Borland, Miss Cecile Carver. How do you do, Mr. Borland? Yeah, but, uh, how, how do you do? We've met before, haven't we? Yeah, oh, uh, have we? Oh, I'm disappointed. I was so sure you wouldn't forget. Oh, I'm around. I mean, I get around. It's, uh, there's so many... So many people, you know, it's it. Mrs. Borland, was he properly sympathetic about your debut? Why, yes, more than I deserve. He seems very understanding. Come along, my dear. No need wasting time on Leonard. See you later, Mr. Borland. What on earth was she talking about? Ah, well, she must be nuts. Well, I, uh, I think I'll catch me a quick one. Uh, excuse me, darling. Come over here. Come on, come on. Why, Leonard. Now, listen. I asked you not to come here. I asked you particularly. And I asked you to be in York tonight for the recital. Why didn't you come? I told you why. She needs me. She needed you? What about me? Please keep your voice down. No, I won't. I suppose you told her the whole story. And now you're backing out on me, is that no, it? No, I didn't tell her anything. Why not? What was there to be afraid of? Just two singers, weren't we? Together professionally, that's all. She'd have understood, wouldn't she? Yeah, well, I'm not so sure. Well, Leonard, surely you don't mean she doesn't trust you. Now, listen, Cecile, yes, I... Yes, she is. Oh, Miss Carver, I was afraid you'd run away. Leonard, I thought you went for a drink. Uh, well, I did. Uh, but you see, I'm not thirsty. Oh. <laughs> we, we just wanted to know if you wouldn't sing for us, Miss Carver. Why, of course I would. Uh, Doris, don't you think we ought to leave? Uh, Why, dear? Just as I'm going to sing, Mr. Borland. Don't you care for singing? <laughs> I'm afraid he doesn't. He couldn't now. Uh, no, no, not Leonard. The village loony, no. <laughs> oh, no more. If he ever did. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Oh, I only mean, after what the poor man's just been through, I could understand if he never wanted to hear a singer again. So, you lied to me, Leonard. Lied? I did not. You lied. You told me you told her nothing. I don't quite understand. Wait a minute. I think I do. Now, now, now listen, Doris. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia. Now, listen, listen, I'll tell you Don't give me that foolish story again about business. I've followed her. Followed her whole career for years. 
I know everything she's done. She's been singing in those places, and Mrs. you... Mrs. Borland, I'm sure I've never met a thing to your husband. Miss Carver, I don't believe you. Listen, we I... We saw uh... quite a lot of each other. That's true. We could hardly help that since we were uh, singing together. You were doing what? Singing. Don't you understand English? <laughs> Just perfect. Leonard singing. Leonard of all people. No, uh, Doris, please. Then maybe he'll sing now, if that's true. Something he sang with Miss Carver. Why don't you, Leonard? Yeah, why not? Sure, I'll sing to you. I'll sing your bow like it. Oh! Come over here. <laughs> Come here. Look at that mirror. That big one on the wall. We'll watch it. Keep your eye on the mirror, Ma, and hold your breath. <laughs> now, who says I can't sing? <laughs> Doris, turn on the light. Are you in bed? Darling, I can't see. Doris, listen. Oh, my head! I'll show you! Okay, you hit me with a lamp. I'll hit you with worse than that. You... Stop, you... No, Doris, cut it out. Shame me, will you? Make a fool out of me. Oh, no, stop. Listen, I'm getting mad. Let go of me. Put on the light. Go away with that woman. Go on, I'll kill you. Will you please listen? Uh, now, please don't make me choke you. No, I'll murder you. All right, there. <laughs> now, behave. <laughs> you little cat. This is a pretty welcome, I must say. Get out. Don't worry, I will. Get out and stay out. I never want to see you again as long as you're alive. You won't, sweetheart. This time I'm through. I've taken all I'm going to take. Ha, jumping on me in the dark. And it isn't because I couldn't explain the whole thing either. I just don't want to. You just nothing but it. Get out, I tell you. Get out. All right, all right. Put down that lamp. Pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. just a moment, Mr. DeMille will present our stars, George Brent, Priscilla Lane, and Gail Patrick, in Act Three of Wife, Husband, and Friend. Young Mr. and Mrs. Bill Taylor are stepping out tonight, all dressed up and looking very festive. What's this? Something seems to be wrong. Wait a minute, Bill. Let me fix your tie. It's all twisted. Now, Bill, don't stare at my hands like that. It makes you cross-eyed. Besides, I can't help the way my hands look. It's washing dishes for you every day that makes them all rough and red like that. Ah, but that's where young Mrs. Bill is wrong. It isn't the dishwashing that's making her hands so rough and unattractive. It's that harsh soap she's using in her dishpan. And that's something she can help very easily. She can change to new quick Lux. Because Lux doesn't give hands rough red dishpan look. We know that's so. Because hundreds of women have proved it in actual tests. Tests made by a well-known scientific laboratory under conditions similar to home dishwashing. And these impartial tests of Lux Flakes against four other popular dishwashing soaps proved New Quick Lux, kindest of all to hands, proved that with New Quick Lux in the dishpan, hands stay soft and smooth and white, the way you want them to be. Now, if young Mrs. Bill would do that one thing, just switch from harsh soap to New Quick Lux for dishes... That little scene you heard a moment ago would probably go like this. Wait a minute, dear. Let me fix your tie. It's all twisted. <laughs> now, Bill, how do you expect me to fix it when you hold my hands like that? I don't. I'd much rather hold your hands. They're so pretty and soft, darling. I love them. Words like that are music to any woman's ears. And soft, smooth, feminine hands inspire them. So, don't let a harsh wash day soap give your hands that ugly dishpan look. Change to gentle new quick lux. It's fast, thrifty, and it leaves your hands so lovely in spite of dishwashing. Buy the thrifty big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow and start using it for your dishes right away. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Wife, Husband, and Friends. <laughs> Locked out of his apartment. Leonard has renounced the world for the privacy of a hotel room and several cases of champagne. At the end of a week, Major Blair finds him looking very much the worse for wear. Briefly, Leonard is uh, blurry-eyed. 
Leonard, my boy, you must pull yourself together. Yeah. You, you mustn't let yourself go to pieces this way. Mm-hmm. Look at me. In 30 years of marriage life, uh, life in 30 mirrors of marriage... Uh, I'll mm-hmm. have some more champagne, Major. Uh, no, thanks, no, thanks. Uh, in, in, in 30 years of married life, I never lost a battle. <laughs> <laughs> Major, have you seen Doris? Uh, no, not since Tuesday. She's gone to Bermuda. Bermuda, huh? Bermuda. Uh, what do I care? That's a spirit, my boy. Come in, come in. Oh, here you are. Did you bring that ice? I'm not the bellboy, Mr. Borland. I'm the manager. Oh, hello. It's about this check, Mr. Borland. Yeah? What check? It, it came back. It, it's no good. You remember about it, don't you? Of course, I remember about it. Who wrote it? But you did, sir. Oh, let me see it. Yeah, it's my handwriting, all right. What about it? Well, it's marked. No funds, Mr. Borland. It's what they call rubber. We've got to do something about it. Oh, certainly. How much do I owe you? $186.10. All right, I'll take care of it. And I'll have to ask you not to try to leave the room until it's all set. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Ball. So am I. Uh, Leonard, my boy, let me take care of it. Thanks, but you know something, Major? I'm broke. Mm, that's so? Yeah, no business. Not even the chicken coop to build. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Well, there's only one thing. I've still got my beautiful voice. Oh, such a way to make a living. Yeah. You know what they want me to do? Sing in the opera with Cecile Carlo. No. Are you going to? You've got to. Oh. Hello? Get me Maine, 54636. Who's that? Mr. Rosselli, opera man. Oh, this is a terrible thing you're doing, my boy. Terrible. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, hello, Rosselli. This is Borland, the singer. Is that offer still good? Don't do it, my boy. Uh-huh. Well, I'm all set. When do we open? Huh? Sure, my voice is still okay. I gave a blast on it this morning, and 40 hogs ran out on 22nd Street. <laughs> Say, how much do I get? 500? Okay, it's a deal. Thank you. Well, Major, can you picture me in the opera? Yes, I can, my boy, but the picture is revolting. <laughs> Leonard Borland, New York contractor, crashes opera. From bricklayer to opera, Borland's career. Borland debuts with Carver. Well, that ought to be fun. I can't get over your coming all the way back from Bermuda just for this. (laughs) I'd come back from China to see Leonard wearing a wig and a sword. But suppose he's good. (laughs) Don't even suggest it. I'm afraid Mr. Borland will find opera a little different. It's one thing just to stand up and sing. It's another, quite another, to act and sing at the same time. I'm going to be there on opening night in the front row, and I hope his tights rip. Who is it? Come in. Leonard, are you ready? The curtain's in ten minutes. Oh, Cecile, look at this beard. Just, just look at it. Don't pull it. Don't pull it. It's all right. You look fine. Oh, fine. I look like Rasputin. Oh, Cecile, I, I, I don't know about this. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I don't mind getting out on the stage in my own pants and singing, but this, this tights thing, I, I'm scared. Oh, Leonard, everybody's scared opening night. But remember this. You're here because I have faith in you. I believe in you. You understand? Yeah, but all this spinach on my face. You're I... not going to let me down, are you? This is all so important to me, the most important thing in the world. And you're going to remember that, aren't you? Well, I guess so, but I wish I had pants on. Oh, forget about the pants. Is your voice up? Huh? Has your voice come up? No, not my voice. Well, try it. Whoa! It feels like it's stuck somewhere. Try it again. Whoa! What's the matter? I don't know. I think it's the beard. It it gets in the way or something. Don't be silly. The beard has nothing to do with it. Oh, but Cecile... Now, don't worry. When you step out on the stage, it'll be there. What'll be there? Your voice. Oh. Now, remember, make your entrance quickly, come right to my side, and be careful of that tree. You knocked it down twice yesterday at rehearsal. Uh-huh. Well, I'll, I'll watch it. Leonard, look at me. You're going to be all right? You are, aren't you? Oh, yeah. If I only had a pair of pants on. There's your cue. Uh, what? Your cue. Go on, get out I there. I can't move. I, I think I'm going to faint. You can't faint now. Get out there. Don't push. Don't push. You fool. 
I told you to look out for that tree. Sing. Sing. Oh. Oh. I can't. You've got to. Sing. Oh. 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 Sing. Do you hear me? Oh. 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 I'm fainting. You're not. You're not fainting. Oh, here I go. Look. Stand up. Oh. Stand up. Oh. Oh. I tell you, he can't sing a note. Oh, poor Leonard. Sing, darling, sing. <laughs> He's no good. He's an amateur making a fool of himself. Ooh. Shut up. Shut up, you foul little beast. Oh, well, All of right you. Shut up. Right. Shut up. Give him a You've got to go back, Leonard. It's the only way. You can lick them, I tell you. Go back on that stage. Oh, no, not me. But it's my show, you thick ape. It's my show, and you're ruining it. You can't do that. Now, let me alone. You yellow. You bet your bottom dollar I'm yellow. Let go. Get out. Get out of my sight. Get out. Get out. Hello, Doris. Oh, Doris. Something terrible has happened to me. Don't tell me. I was out there. I saw it. I couldn't even croak. Oh, you poor lamb. Get that silly wig off. I could have killed them. Get out of those boots. Oh, it doesn't matter, sweet. I guess you and I, we're just not singers. We sing, I suppose, but we're not singers. Oh, wait a minute, Doris. Is that on the level? Really? Mm, darling, I love you. And never in my life did I love you more than when you knocked over that tree. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a Lulu. <laughs> All I could think was, heaven help me, I'm married to one of the Ritz brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Leonard. Hello, Mike. Say, hey, listen, fella. Sit just... down. Sit down. We're celebrating. You mean it was a success? Oh, Mike, weren't you there? Doris, I didn't have the heart. Oh, brother, I busted that opera wide open. No kid. I smeared that opera from here to breakfast. I was the flop of the century. Oh, boy, that's great. I knew my boy could do it. One performance balling, that's me. Okay, okay, but now listen. In one hour from now, there's a train leaving Penn Station for Miami. And if we're on it, we've got a job. It's a racetrack, a million-dollar plant. Can you make it? Can we make Miami, it? Miami, here we come. Oh, get oh, those like tights on it, darling. Make it snappy, driver. Okay, bud, I'm doing my best. Oh, oh it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> hey, I had to give my right arm to get a load of you wrestling with that tree. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, you croaked. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get out of those. I tried so hard, and all that came out was this. It's coming back to me. That window, buddy, will cost you eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> In a moment, our stars will return to the microphone for a curtain call. Now, Sally, I have something here I'd like you to read. Hmm, let's see. Fashion note for spring. Most petticoats are now made with a band rather than a yoke, and the full ruffles which extended up the back to give the effect of a bustle are not often used. Casings in which steels are run to be removed when laundry replace these ruffles. Mr. Roick, a fashion note for spring? Well, maybe I forgot to say that it was the spring of 1888. Well, <laughs> you certainly had me worried for a minute. A petticoat with steels in it, imagine. And that word, laundry. Sounds like hard work. Rub-a-dub in the laundry tub. Well, that's gone the way of petticoats with steels in them. No more cake soap rubbing for us now that we have... New Quick Lux Flakes. Yes, Today's filmy silk, rayon, and nylon fabrics need gentle care. And new Quick Lux is wonderfully gentle. Safe for everything, safe in water alone. There's no rubbing, no harmful alkali into the colors of fabric. And it's so fast, too, Mr. Ruick. We can freshen lingerie in no time with those lovely, rich Lux suds. They just float away soil and perspiration, leave things fresh as a daisy. It takes no time at all to Lux on these every day. So, along with the vanishing bustles on petticoats, the bustle and hustle of old-fashioned wash days has vanished, thanks to new Quick Lux. Here's a thrift dip, too. In water of average hardness, the generous big box of Lux Flakes will do under things daily 
for at least two months. That's a mighty thrifty way to protect daintiness and keep nice things new-looking longer. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. The curtain has fallen on wife, husband, and friend. But George Brent, Priscilla Lane, and Gail Patrick are coming back to our microphone now. And we say bravo to all three of them. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. It was grand being here again. I second that. In fact, it was a unique experience for me. Well, what do you mean, George? You've been here a lot. Yes, Gail, but C.B. usually casts me in those plays where there are two men and one girl. But tonight, well, you see how it is. Well, don't let it go to your head, George. This was a comedy. <laughs> Say, what's this wild story about you going to Honolulu in a sailboat? Nothing wild about it, Priscilla. I hope to get away from work long enough to enter the yacht race from San Pedro to Hawaii. It starts the 4th of July. And when do you expect to get there? <laughs> I guess that depends on the wind more than it does on George. I certainly envy him. We'll miss his schooner in the harbor. Well, tell us about this boat, George. Well, it's an 86-footer. I call it a south wind. She carries a crew of 14. And right now, the skipper is burning the midnight oil studying navigation. I feel a little doubtful about you out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with the book of instructions in one hand and the steering wheel in the other. Steering wheel? I could feel Mr. DeMille shudder from here, Gail. On a schooner, it's the helm. Uh, what about giving me a few lessons someday, C.B.? Name the day, George. We'll go down to the harbor, and I'll give you a little practice race with my schooner, the Seaward. Fine, I'll take you up on that. And uh, what's the show for next week, C.B.? Next week, George, the Lux Radio Theater presents an Academy Award winner. The play is Kitty Foyle, and our star is Ginger Rogers. Hollywood itself, by a majority of all the actors, directors, and producers, voted Ginger Rogers' performance in this RKO picture the finest by an actress during the past year. Next Monday night, she'll play Kitty Foyle for the first time on the air. And with Ginger in this great emotional drama, we'll have both the leading men from the screencast, Dennis Morgan and James Craig. It was really a great picture, Mr. DeMille. And for me, it'll be one of the big events of the radio season. And good night. Good night. Good night. You three make a perfect triangle. And fair wins for the yacht race, George. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we send you our very heartiest greetings to the campfire girls of St. Paul, Minnesota, who are indeed good friends of ours. They've just made a survey of 10,000 high school students in St. Paul and discovered that the Lux Radio Theater is the favorite radio program in the city's high schools. And that's good news at anybody's campfire. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ginger Rogers in Kitty Foyle with Dennis Morgan and James Cray. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. George Brent and Priscilla Lane appeared tonight through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Studio. George Brent is currently seen in the Warner Brothers production, The Great Lie. Gail Patrick has just finished the picture, Love Crazy, at Metro-Golden-Mayer. Included in tonight's play were Verna Felton as Mrs. Blair, Hans Conried as Hugo, Gail Gordon as Craig, and Abe Reynolds, Thomas Mills, Edward Marr, Stanley Farrar, and Hal K. Dawson. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers. And your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>